on because as you can appreciate it is quite difficult to fo keep up with the state of play when it's a bit of a moving feast in here as well and just further to that um, sort of keeping order of things if we could sort of minimize the commentary when your mics aren't on because that's getting picked up as well from live microphones and making things difficult and obviously I'm trying to keep track of everything as well so a recommendation I've had uh, from officers is that uh, Councillor McCann could explain to us the differences between his amended table and the original table to help people understand the specific changes that we are going to be voting on. Thank you very much for that opportunity to go through this line by line. So obviously uh, no change to new public toilets and I'm just going to make sure that I refer backwards so I don't make a mistake and my eyesight is failing me. Otaki pool, no change. Um, nah, right, is this in the same order or is it changed order? That doesn't make it easier. Okay, I might need help from people. Mahara Gallery, um, that is the significant change and has been removed. The reason for that is um, that I believe that if uh, we... I was going to say, you can address the reasons for the changes in debate, I think. I think if you just Certainly. detail the specific changes, then we'll help people keep track of what is Certainly. being proposed. Follow your instructions. McLean Park Stage 2 stays the same. McLean Park Stage 1 stays the same. Uh, Paikokariki Life Club stays the same. Um, Climate Sustainability Fund stays the same. Supporting Collaborative um, Provisions, just check that's, that has stayed the same. Correct me if I make a mistake here. Um, no, 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 sorry, I've read the wrong one. I knew that would happen. So that has gone. Um, meanwhile, Spaces has gone. Um, Implementing the Kapiti Coast Age Friendly Plan has stayed the same. The food and beverage costs uh, has stayed the same. The education hub has stayed the same. The housing and the, 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 the housing portfolio program operational funding iwi capacity um, has uh, stayed the same and Tahurahi um, storytelling has changed and I've missed something out. Um, obviously, uh, one of the big changes here is to the Waikanae Library with funds going into that. And have I missed anything? Yeah, the art carpety place-based right. housing strategy so that is yep thank you that has been added in um, so that we are progressing uh, iwi based housing uh, I think that's something everyone can agree that uh, is absolutely vital I think I've read that off sorry can I can I um, ask a question. I think that would be helpful for us finding our way through this if you yeah. were able, if we did and, have and some questions maybe, about maybe this. Maybe we can just brainstorm it yeah. rather than, you know, just, just to see if we can come up with something that we can all agree to. So, um, the, the Waikanae Library, do, is that, are we short on budget for that through our normal budgeting? Uh, do we have a shortfall in our CapEx budget that needs plugging, or I mean, I'm got mics or have we got a budget in, in place for Waikanae Library? Okay. Um, that, thanks, Councillor. Um, as per the, the brief from a couple of weeks ago, we have 13.8 million capex in, in the LTP for the Waikanae Library. We're just at the point where we're bringing together the uh, uh, d design and sites, and it appears that we're going to be, th that to meet the aspirations that we have set ourselves for the Waikanae Library, it does appear that there's going to be a substantial gap 
between 13.8 and wherever we land. But we haven't actually landed yet, so we're not actually able to give you some precise advice around that. Sorry, turning, I was behaving and turning off my mic so I didn't create more noise. I'll allow Councillor Holbrook to continue with her questions there. Thank you. So, at what stage would we be ready to put that capex towards the library? I mean, do we, do we need it in the next financial year? So we'll put a, um, a placeholder in for early next calendar year to come back to the new council with, uh, um, uh, after we've done some consultation uh, with a plan for, uh, um, with an updated plan as to the key milestones for the Waikanae Library. I'm just trying to, to, to understand whether we, whether we have a budget for the Waikanae Library, which is going to see us through the next year, or whether we need this emergency m funding that's not in our plans. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, it, it's, it's um, difficult for me to give you advice uh, um, on this in any detail. I, I'm not exactly aware of what this funding is for. We don't have an immediate need for, for funding, but in the longer term and out years, we, we are likely to have uh, um, a requirement if we want to meet the aspirations we have set ourselves for the Waikanae Library. I was, I was just going to um, say, given that it looks like we're going to have a few more questions come out of this, we might uh, just, under Standing Order 3.5, do a temporary suspension of standing orders, so we can have this discussion as it seems it's going to go on a bit longer. I'll second that. Cool. Uh, now, do we have debate on that? I don't think we do. No. So no debate on that. So all those in favour, say aye. 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 Those against? And it's carried. Right, now we can have a bit more of a freewheeling uh, discussion about this. Um, so, uh, Councillor McCann, I think, was going to say something in relation to the discussion that uh, the Deputy Mayor was having with Mike just before. Yeah, the Deputy Mayor was using the word emergency funding. I think we need to actually go back to what this funding is. It's better off funding. So this is an opportunity to create um, an environment where our community is going to be better off. We've got huge rate uh, increases coming if we are to believe all our costs are going up. So we need to be looking at this funding very, very carefully to see where we can create some headroom for council. We've had a briefing um, around the library that seemed to indicate that there was going to be significant increases in costs. We don't know what they will be. I'm concerned about that. I think um, increasing uh, the funding that goes into that area is very, very prudent. Anything that we put into the library and perhaps don't spend in later years uh, will come off the rates bill. Um, but if this is not funding that we should just spend on new projects, it's to make us better off. And I think part of that is trying to ensure that we don't have significant rate rises. So that's uh, part of the reasoning uh, for that. And we also know that the community has spoken very, very loudly about how upset they are that the library isn't operating in Waikanae. I think this also sends a very good signal that we're listening. Cool. Uh, I think next we've got Councillor Randall who's on Zoom. I don't want to leave him waiting too long this time. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Tim, I want to raise a point about Councillor, um, about the Deputy Mayor. I mean, McLean Park, there's money in there for an extra for a changing room. But we'd already, a, a year or so ago, there was already going to be toilets in the changing room. Specifically, um, mentioned, one of the staff mentioned changing rooms. So why are they coming up with that? I mean, it's the same argument. I'm, I'm supporting it, but it's the same argument that Deputy Mayor had just raised. I, I think the argument is irrelevant. We just support it. Thank you very much. Now we had um, Mayor Guru there, I believe, next. Thank you. Um, I've got a major problem with this. Um, I, can I have the floor, please? I have a major problem with this, procedural and in the sense of the treaty partnership, um, what the DIA um, criteria for this particular funding has said very clearly, there needs to be special engagement with local levy. Um, we already noted that the engagement has not been done properly. 
and engagement is supposed to be beyond standing committee, beyond this committee. And already we have heard from the EB that the engagement has not been done properly. But we have done some level of engagement. I've tried very hard to get the EB around the table with some success. But what's happening now is, is the whole thing has been hijacked by uh, a process which hasn't gone even with the minimum uh, engagement that we've had. The issues that, some of the issues that have been taken out have got EV input into those. And my recognition of how the, the engagement does is they need to go back and talk with their own people about this. So the question was raised earlier by um, Nahapu. Is this just looking at the list itself and making a decision? Or are we going to go back and re-engage this on a number of issues? This is a re-engagement. I've got serious, serious problem with this. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, the uh, Deputy Mayor. So I can think of a change to the table which wouldn't have potentially such significant iwi impact as some of the things that have been suggested, such as social wellbeing priorities and things like that. So the real problem with the Mahara Gallery is that we're going to have a building sitting there before the end of the financial year. We need to open the doors. So I'm s whatever's gone wrong in the past, and stuff has gone wrong with that, we need to be able to run that gallery from day one. So if we, if we include one year of operational funding, that's going to just get us through that hurdle so that we can go through an annual plan process, we can have a proper look at the, at the model. It might be that that funding even lasts longer than a year, depending on the, you know, the kind of thing that James has been talking about with potentially less days open a week or, you know, that level of, we can have that level of service discussion, but we know that we have the funds to run that gallery for the first year. So I'd really like to keep in one year the Mahara Gallery. And then the other $800,000 could go towards the Waikanae Library project. And then leave the other stuff alone because of the concerns that Guru has around consultation. But between those two projects, I don't think there would be just just sh shuffling funds from one of those projects to the other, I don't think would be a major problem in terms of engagement. So I think it cuts through that. So I don't know what other people think about that. That's just my suggestion, because I think that compromise is always better than division. original table, but only $400,000 for Mahara Gallery, and an extra line with $800,000 for the library. So just a quick procedural matter, just because we're coming up on six hours of runtime, which includes adjournments, uh, we just need to move that, an extension of time for the meeting, if Councillor McCann... Hello? 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 We're sorry, we're just trying to take care of a quick proce procedural matter, which is the meeting, including adjournments, obviously can't go longer than six hours without a motion to extend it. So we just need a motion to extend the meeting time, given that we started at 9.30, and regardless of the adjournment, we're coming up on 3.30 very quickly. So I'm happy to move that we have an extension <laughs> of time. Councillor Buswell is happy to second it. All those in favour say aye. Aye. All those against, and it is carried. Good, now we can go back to where we were, which I believe was John Barrett was about to speak. He's gone, right there. Thanks. Thanks, Mr Chairman, and um, thanks, uh, Your Worship, for advocating on, on behalf of Mana Whenua. But, look, I, I just want to make a couple of comments, um, probably the... Um, the two issues for for me, or for Te Atiawa, I should say, are definitely reference back to the um, to the um, the DIA document regarding EV engagement. I, just, I, I can't stress that enough. Um, after our discussion, I think 
two weeks ago, I thought we, we were pretty, we made good progress in terms of establishing our, our, our newish or new relationship with council. Um, just in terms of this particular agenda and these items, I, I have to say, uh, we're not well enough prepared to answer, uh, to respond to this in a way that's meaningful and gives, gives mana to, to the decision-making process. Uh, I'm also mindful of the fact that there are some significant issues in here that need to be dealt with pretty quickly. Well, you know, now it's November, I think, it's a, it's a little bit less pressure. But we're, I'm just not comfortable, um, although I know I'm, we're not in a voting uh, position at the moment, but uh, the, just not comfortable with the process. To Uruhi, you, you're all councillors are aware of Te Atiawa's support for the Te Uruhi project uh, from the outset. Te Atiawa would be very concerned if that disappeared from us, uh, given, given the DIA's um, pretty clear instructions about involving mana whenua in these decision-making processes. We'd also be concerned if Mahara Gallery wasn't given all the support it required to do a fantastic job for, for, for our, our district, our community. So that, that really the only two things I want to say, but I, I can't um, you know, read my lips again. Uh, we, we would take whatever action was required to demonstrate the lack of adequate consultation in terms of Council Iwi in, in this particular context. Thank you. Now we have Councillor Pravano via Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. So um, I have con some concerns, as um, the Deputy Mayor said, that we potentially would have a building um, completed in. Um, for the gallery, probably end of March, without any funding. So um, I know it's a question you probably can't answer, but I'll make it a rhetorical question: Is how would that building operate? How would that gallery operate without this funding? So um, the and around that area too, uh, we've I've just heard that the figure of four hundred thousand might be um, useful for for one year, but in reality we haven't seen the figures, we don't actually know what that money's been spent on. And I think those questions have been asked but they of councillors but have not been provided to councillors. So here we are making decisions on a lot of things in the dark, uh, which is not the way that we should be operating. So um, that's one thing I wanted to say. So obviously the library, um, you know, I've money spent on the library now versus at another point in time, um, it's good, but when the money is coming from an outside um, um, agency, obviously that's not going to impact on our ratepayer um, levels. But I think also too, when we're actually making decisions here around this $5.2 million, we need to focus on those activities that are already that we that they're already in progress, um, rather than spreading ourselves even thinner by including new projects. And I know that the uh, and I know I mentioned the the surf club earlier on, and I I put that in this situation. You know they need to do go away and do some more work, come up with their own fund some funding models, and then um, bring it back to us, and we'll see how that fits into the situation. So I, um, you know, I believe that the Mahara Gallery needs money to um, for operations, and I'm fully aware that there have, have has been some some financial decision making here, which is probably not ideal, and it has not been ideal that councillors have um, have been kept in the dark. But I think that we need need to move forward, and the reality is that building needs that gallery needs to be funded. So I don't disagree with the library also receiving some funding but I think maybe some of these um, gains could be made if the Paikokareki Surf um, Lifesaving Club um, did not receive any funding. Um, there's probably some other projects there that um, that could be looked at as well but I think we need to go back to our you know our 
the core activities that we're actually looking at here, that's ones that have already started. So that's my five, um, five cents worth. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pravanov. Now we have Kim Tahiwi, who's on Zoom. Kia ora. Um, I just want to clarify um, our EVs Ngahapu's position. So we were aware of the amended list. Um, we have had some staff and councillors um, trying really hard to get some meaningful engagement with us. And, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, you being one of them, and, and concerned about the lack of engagement. And so I think we've established that the engagement was lacking. Uh, we've had the CE acknowledge that and, and say that we should do better next time. Okay, so we were aware of the amended list. Um, in terms of Te Uruhi, the substitute funding of 1 million uh, was suggested by staff, I assume by way of uh, trying to get mana whenua input. Um, and then we acknowledge that we uh, will try to do better going forward. So before we came to this meeting, we were aware of the two amended lists and we had to think about which option we would vote for. And we came to the conclusion that actually neither option presented on the day, in our opinion, had followed due process in regard to engagement, which had resulted in inadequate me meaningful engagement for both iwi partners, us as iwi partners, and the community that we're all here supposed to be serving. Um, and, and so our opinion was that if we allow mediocrity is what we we deem it to be to continue, then we ourselves become mediocre. So our our thought was that if we cast a vote either way, it sends us a statement that we are okay with this behaviour going forward and we'll allow it to continue. So we, we can't stress enough the lack of process that was followed, but I think we can all agree on that. Um, so as we sat there, we thought about what we were going to say we were going to say at this hui, um, our chair um, reminded me that she asked councillors to be brave before and um, challenged whoever sits at this table to actually take a stand against this, about, against the, not against the staff or councillors or anything like that, but against the mediocrity and against us actually allowing this behaviour to continue the lack of engagement. I understand the time constraints. I understand all that. Over the 12, last 12 months, Council staff have uh, made a positive inroad into engagement with Ngahapu. I can't speak for the other two iwi, um, and I understand all that. But if we if we just keep voting, in our opinion, then we just allow the behaviour to continue and we accept it. Um, so for that reason, Mana Whenua chose not to meet mediocre, and we chose to put principle over process, which is why we've abstained from making any any vote on either of these lists. Um, and it goes back to what John said, is that we are just not well prepared to make any decision on the items on these lists. We could debate them all you like, but if we had even been engaged in the beginning and there had been collaboration, this list would look very different. Um, I don't want to try and vote for a list that has a million dollars for Te Urihi as a substitute. If the list had a million dollars for Te Urihi not as a substitute, maybe it would be a different story. But nevertheless, whatever is on these lists, the engagement has not allowed us to make any meaningful decisions on any of these projects, which is why we're abstaining today. Um, so I don't know whether that helps the people in the room um, decide whether Mana Whenua has actually been involved. So, because we have been involved in these discussions and we were aware of the two lists. And I just want to clarify that. Um, but that was our stance. At the end of the day, we stand on principle. And should you choose to go with either list, we are saying we're signalling that we won't vote until the process itself becomes better. 
and that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for that. Now I believe we've got Councillor Coots, who is also on Zoom. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and look, I just uh, acknowledge um, the comments from Kim there. Um, uh, totally agree in terms of process, Kim. And um, yeah, applaud you for what you've said. Um, the question that I have is, um, so I've just got a question with regards to the comments that were made around the uh, gallery opening. Uh, I heard someone say March. Is that the uh, scheduled or expected opening month for the gallery? Mike is available to answer that. Uh, so the latest official uh, um, uh, from the trust is end of April. However, we understand there might be a couple of issues that might push that out even further. So we're in touch with the trust, uh, looking at the middle of next year, April at the earliest. So I've got a couple of follow-up questions based on that response. Thank you, Mike. Can staff please tell me when the annual plan process for 2023 kicks off? Ian? I would, I would expect that would commence pre-Christmas. So um, I would think, I mean, it's yet to be planned out, but I would think there'd be initial engagement before Christmas. Thank you. Can staff please confirm that there is $339,590 already in the budget for Mahara Gallery for 2023-24? Sorry, they're just flicking through papers to confirm that? Yep, that's correct. So, so the suggestion that the gallery would not be able to open, is that statement factually correct, that they would have no funds to be able to operate? And any additional funds, because that could, for the rebalance of the year, should they be required, could they be discussed and raised through the annual plan process as appropriate with sufficient information? Um, I think ne next year certainly annual plan. Um, the issue I think is the tail end of this year. So, um, you know, if they're operating at the new at the levels indicated, there would be a shortfall in the current year, where there's two hundred twenty-three thousand currently in the budget. Okay, that's not been a May. I wasn't aware of that shortfall within within this year under the existing building, existing operations. Have they expanded their offerings in their existing building? It's very difficult. We've had um, examples of increased insurance, increased wages, increased um, uh, exhibitions and opening hours. And, and it is very difficult to, uh, and, and con contradictory answers from elected members and staff. So forgive me if I'm struggling a little bit in terms of where some of the costs are coming from and in what year. Uh, so, Council, through you, Mr Chair, Council, there, there are ongoing costs for the gallery, Mahara Iti, the, the, the small gallery that is still open, and also some storage costs for their collection that, that, that are ongoing. That that uh, comprises a degree of the funding that is in, in, in the current year. But I also just need to point out that um, the funding that is before you uh, around Mahara is actually OPEX. This is one of the few government funds where we can actually attract OPEX as well as CAPEX. And it's important to point out that the OPEX uh, pretty much comes directly off rates, whereas the CAPEX has to be amortised over the life of the asset through the years, I guess, for the in the case of the libraries. So the impact won't be as immediate as it is for anything that is of operating expenditure. Thank you. But that raises a very good point, uh, which I'll ask of Ian. With the gallery proposing to increase their operating costs by 400k a year, am I right in thinking that's close to half a percent uh, rate increase to the ratepayer? Um, that is potentially funding that could be used for other ratepayer activities. 400,000, that's close to half a percent? Yep, that's correct. 400 would be about half a percent. Thank you. Any more questions, Councillor Coots? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor, I'm sorry, the Deputy Mayor wants to add something uh, to those points. I think it's important to have all the information. Long term, 
the gallery is planning to find other fund find other funding sources, including they're, they're um, starting the process of setting up a foundation at the moment. So it's it wouldn't it it, it won't necessarily be a hundred percent council. Don't forget also they sell art. They sold more art during lockdown than they did usually from the gallery. So imagine what it's going to be like when they have a state of the art gallery that people really want to enter. You know, so it's 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 just to cover this initial shortfall, which wasn't identified. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what people want to do. I've made I've made a suggestion, which is a serious compromise, and I, you know, hesitate because I know that it'll be more useful to spend this money on opex and capex, and also I'm not wanting to make too many changes to what we've done our minimal, shameful consultation on. You know, putting things on the table today, that's zero consultation. So, yeah, that's just my thinking. And, yeah. Cool. Councillor Elliott. Oh, look, thanks, but I just want a confirmation that it was 400k plus the amount already in the LTP, and that was discussed by James Coates. So, thank you. Perfect. Uh, I believe Councillor McCann is next. Oh, you must share. I was going to... Uh, it's. It's an observation, but also a question. If we were to approve the 400K for one year, we are effectively saying uh, to the gallery, um, the, the operating design uh, that you have proposed that is going to cost 400K a year, we are approving. And, and then it is very, very, very hard to pull back. I've heard the Deputy Mayor saying, you know, they'll be able to increase their forms of income. You know, that's pie in the sky stuff. We are effectively locking in our ratepayers to another 400K per year because we have not had the discussions with the gallery about an operating model that's fit for purpose. That's the problem with approving 400K at the moment. Cool, we've got uh, Councillor Pravanov on Zoom. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, um, Councillor Coots, for asking your questions. And I some um, similar questions along the same line, which probably need clarification. So um, I think at the community board meeting at the end of March was what was suggested, and obviously it's been moved out to then. But I um, would um, seek clarification on the fact that some of that OPEX is needed to be spent way before it opens to actually have it set up. and. Um, so that's with staff, plus also to clarification on whether it's set up um, costs as well. I know that there's been conversations around, um, I think it's a new IT system and whether that's coming out of, you know, you know whether that's OPEX being included in OPEX or whether that's more CAPEX. So I'm just wondering whether this initial amount of um, money that's been deemed on a yearly basis is actually what we continue to, or is it just particularly high given that the gallery, the gallery is about to open? Just looking at... Um, uh, um, th thank you, Councillor. Yes, there are some um, upfront costs, such as the IT system. Um, I think those are low tens of thousands of dollars. Um, the, the, the big... The big kicker here is actually personnel costs, and um, I guess one of the issues with, with um, having a shorter period is in terms of hiring staff, um, that, that's going to be a key challenge A key challenge for the gallery. And, and um, if you think about what that means in terms of who you can hire and, and the longevity they might expect as, as employees, that's kind of the... That's got, firstly, that is the major uh, thing that comprises the cost. The, the upfront cost is, is mostly amortised because it's mostly capex. Uh, um, but yeah, most, it's mostly to do with staff cost. Uh, that, that is the bulk of the pain with respect to cost and with respect to planning and, and uh, ramping up into the, into the opening of the, of the gallery. The other problem, of course, is with the opening of the gallery being a little bit fluid, is when you hire staff so that they're there on day one but not hired well before, so they're sitting around doing nothing. So that's something that the Trust is working through at the moment. Thank you. All right, I believe we next have His Worship the Mayor. I think some of the councillors here are not listening. Evie has spoken and told you what the journey has been. We had the first list that was produced, and we found out that there's been no Evie engagement 
We directed the staff to go back and do that. There was some engagement, and in the, and they came up with the second list. And even then, if we have said that they were not completely aware of the BIA's um, engagement uh, request that we are supposed to do for the fallen shot. And then while EV have expressed that, we have a third iteration, which completely months that whole lot, until like the deputy mayor said, we've got zero um, consultation process, engagement process. This is not. This is not going to work. Because the recommendation from the BIA is very specific and very clear. If we have the possibility or the potential to question this whole process and we'll get zilch. So what, I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what, what I'm saying is um, that we may have to go back to the EVA and say, look, what do you want us to do next, given where we are? And it's good that we are having you around the table to start the conversation. Right, we've got Councillor Coots via Zoom. Unless see we have changed their position from the question that I put earlier, their response, or at least some of the members' response, was to not let this lie on the table and continue on. So what are you suggesting, Your Worship? Okay, I'll, I'll just respond to you. The question was... Uh, his Worship, the Mayor. I'll just wait for him to go red so you can everyone can hear him. Be because if, if Iwi had said, yes, we agree, let's let it lay on the table, then we probably wouldn't still be here sitting discussing this now. Hang on. Thank you very much for asking the question. It was very clear from Nahapu, the question was raised, if this is just talking about the list that we've got before us, then we can press on and do it. Otherwise, it'll have to be a total re-engagement. That was very clear. This third iteration that's come out is then upset the whole apple cart. We are now back to a complete re-engagement. -enga and in that process, we have stated very clearly that they're not even wanting two lists let alone the third list. So we are, given we are the lack of process. Well, I, let, let me just say, we can, both of us can talk about this until the cows come home. As I said, I take my direction at this, at this particular juncture from um, the EV around the table. Well, given the lack of process, Your Worship, which was not the doing of elected members, I did attempt to engage with EWE, hence some of the additions in the revised list around the housing strategy for the Art Confederation. So with all due respect, there was an attempt uh, to involve them in a revised list. Appreciate that Atiawa uh, was not uh, directly involved, um, but there was a request for them to be reached out to. So again, I, I think the whole process has been a shambles, but we have an option to approve a list today in one that has EWE aspirations included in it, or to let it lay on the table. And I heard earlier that that was not their desire. If that has changed, then that's fine and I'll support that. But that's not what I've heard. Councillor Halliday. Yeah, I'm only going to stand on a few toes here. Um, this, this has been a bit of a shambles. I think we can all agree with that. Um, so to get this compromised, uh, get this moving forward to me, there's going to have to be some compromise by a few people uh, with regards to things. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I take a little bit of umbrage to you trying to put this back on us. Um, you are the mayor, uh, the DIA, um, the DIA was so, that was such a high priority, and you should have made sure that that was a priority that was followed through on. Um, and that's been really a, a, um, uh, an aspect of this whole process in my opinion, I'm a process person. I would have loved to have seen something here with the Citizens Advice Bureau, the delivery of the arts strategy with regards to an arm of the um, uh, economic development strategy, but I didn't want this to turn into a lolly scramble. Uh, we could have had these conversations months ago. Um, the fact that we found out this got extended by two months at this meeting. Um, so, and, and Mr. Barrett, you know, um, unfortunately, we've had the situation where Atiawa's, if you like, um, approach to Making a statement has been not to engage. Um, and um, you throw all that into the mix, uh, and you've just got what I consider an exceedingly embarrassing situation, which we're in. Um, I really appreciate um, all three EWI's input in today's discussions, um, because they've um, held an honest account to the situation and really put a, 
a light on some issues that I think we all need to really look hard at with regards to due process and how we've gotten to where we have with this today. But I'm not in, I'm not in favour of leaving this table without a decision, uh, but if I'm in the minority, I'm in the minority. My compromise on this would be very, very simple. Uh, is to put $400,000 towards Mahara, as um, Deputy Mayor Halborough has said. Um, but that funding, if it's not used, can get transferred into the next year, and they need to have a very hard look at their budget, which I'm sure after all this, Ian, you'd be right on top of with regards to things moving forward. I'd also like to see half the money taken out of V11, the Progressing the House Strategy, and put back into Tiurihi, Storytelling and Landscaping for the site, I don't know what this is going to look like on the other side of the elections with regards to Tahurihi, but I do think there is some importance with regards to telling a story down there, and I would like to see some funding allowed for that, which can potentially work with Mana Whenua or Iwi in regards to um, what that looks like down at um, down at McLean Park or the Te Urihi site as such. So that's, that's my solution to this. Um, I'm um, happy for it to be accepted or not. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my 10 cents worth. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, um, I, I've had a suggestion from the Deputy Mayor, which is, has which has also been picked up by Martin Halliday, and it's around um, trying to part fund Mahara Gallery. So, I am not in opposition to that idea, but here is the bit that we need to get right. If we just give Mahara Gallery 400,000 for one year, it is not with the expectation that the current business model is acceptable because it can't keep on going because the, un unless there is a lot of artwork sold or some type of monetization of um, what is a gallery, then we're going to be left with 400,000 a year. So if we were to move uh, 400,000 out of the Waikanae Library and put it back in Mahara Gallery, it would be conditional on a business plan and those things being negotiated with council in a way that doesn't end up with council with a $400,000 tag every year. I don't know how to word that better. Perhaps the CE does, but I'm sure that you can see that we're trying to compromise, but also trying to make sure that we're not setting up the rate pairs for 400 k every year on top of the um, 223 and um, 339 that's already budgeted. Does that make some sense, Mr. Chair? That's a question for the whole council to sort of weigh on. But I can see the Deputy Mayor's agreeing with that. We might be starting to eke our way forward. Uh, now, I can see Councillor Randall is on Zoom, so it would be remiss of me not to... to oh, actually, Councillor Coots, he had his hand up. Oh, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Uh, it was Councillor Coots. Look, that's my apologies, Gwen. I hadn't put my hand down from previously speaking. Okay, um, let's go. Well, I was going to say Councillor Buswell, I think, was just before Councillor Hanford, so we'll go Councillor Buswell, then Councillor Hanford. It was just um, to carry on the conversation about the 400,000. Um, on to, to be honest, the Mahara Gallery line is the only one that stipulates for three years, and we knew that that was split across um, three years, 400 each year. All of these other things are just one-off amounts that don't stipulate any years. So in fairness, we could turn around and say, well, gosh, the Climate and Sustainability Fund, OPEX, 200,000, they might want that every year till the cars come home. So I think that even just by changing the Mahara Gallery to 400,000 and don't put any years, like none of the others have got years, then we might, that would be fine. I mean, we're really splitting hairs here. Uh, apologies, Councillor Hanford. Uh, Councillor McCann is just going to respond to that. Respectfully, I do disagree because we have had a process where the Mahara Gallery have put forward a business plan that we have not approved of. Um, and while you know that might be the wrong language, unless we renegotiate that business plan, we will be stuck with 400,000 per year. Because once you've hired the staff and put in place 
a different system and remove your volunteers and open your hours, it's very hard to go backwards. It's much easier to go forwards, but you know, as a, as a business owner, you know pulling back is really hard and there is cost once you've got a staff member. If you've got to remove them, you've got redundancy. Um, so I do think that is why I'm saying we can't just give them 400,000 without some stipulation that there is a, a business plan brought to council and approved because at the moment it doesn't look, it looks like they have come up with the business plan and we're the funders, but we haven't been talked to. Apologies, uh, Councillor Hanford. There we go, hopefully I'm unmuted now. I am just after a little bit of clarity. So we're now talking about the original list, except changing the Mahara Gallery number to 400,000, putting the rest of that into Waikanae Library. Where does what Councillor Halliday mentioned about potential storytelling for Te Uruhi, would that just remain in, we're, we're imagining, and then we would not include what's on the second list or the second iteration, it's all getting a bit confusing, that has um, in there, I think it was 200,000 for the Arts Confederation kind of housing mahi. So that would be, would be not included, but there would still be inclusion of um, kind of storytelling Mana whenua, um, yeah, mana whenua storytelling and history down at the Te Urahi site. Is that just just for kind of clarity in my own mind? Councillor McCann. Yes, sorry. S sorry, Sophie, I'm, I'm answering your question to be helpful. Um, the Deputy Mayor and I were talking about the amended list, the one that I proposed, not the original list. And we're, we're trying to be flexible on where, where funds can come from. I think we, um, if I speak for the Deputy Mayor, and, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, that if we need to move money, then it can come out of the Waikanae Library because that's where we put the most savings. Is that fair at the moment? So the Deputy Mayor is nodded her head. Okay, yeah, that makes sense then. I guess, yeah, would there be any space then to consider the storytelling aspects of Te Urahi within that amended list, that second list, Councillor McCann? I'm in the hot seat. Yes, but I think we have to, and, and this is really a respectful question to Iwi, if we use the name Te Urahi, we absolutely confuse the community. And, and I think that we probably would need to be very, very clear that it's not funding the building which is due for a, a different vote, but funding the storytelling within McLean Park. I, I don't know how the wording would be, but it's going to create real confusion if we don't, um, you know, deal with that now. And, and I think Iwi might would have a much better answer than I would for how we could do that. One answer. Well, I have John. Yep. Um, I, I don't know whether it's the council's role to actually do the name or the put the comms around, I think your role is to make a decision about spending the money, isn't it? Councillor McCain? Oh, I'm getting asked lots of questions. Actually, with respect, I think the comms in this area has been one of the things that our councillors have been most concerned about. Um, during the process, we weren't able to inform the public of what was actually occurring. Uh, we found there was a lot of misinformation and a lot of um, misinformation being generated um, when there was a lack of information. So as councillors over the last year, we have certainly agreed as a whole that we want to make sure that there are very, very clear comms so that the public can be informed. So with respect, I think this is one of those examples where we wouldn't want to leave a gap and have that filled by misinformation. Councillor Hanford. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh, this is all, all getting quite complicated because we have to to make sure that kind of as as we have put the challenge to us that we are being we are being kind of bold and not necessarily just um, yeah getting complacent with the way that engagement has been happening and that's a challenge on us I guess to do better, um, but also. Yeah, also we want to make a decision. I would just like to acknowledge, though, 
staff for bringing what they have to the table and for initiating engagement and for getting us to this point because I think it's an important conversation to be having but I just yeah I, I just would kind of total call Kim's comments as well Cool. Thank you. Councillor Halliday? Yep, through you, Mr Chair. I actually uh, had a, um, a comment that I, uh, I want some clarity on, and Mike, you might be able to help me out with this. Um, why can I library? I just want to refer back to we've got, um, we're looking at money with regards to CapEx, as you pointed out. Um, would it be a fair assumption that there is work being done with regards to why can I library that is OPEX? Out of the 13 million that we've already budgeted in that space? Uh, yeah, there are some, some minor things we do around design that have to be OPEX, they can't be CAPEX, can't be capitalised. It's mostly CAPEX though, Councillor. Uh, top of my head, I've struggled, I'm sorry, I'll have to find out for you. Just to, just to take on board what you were saying, any money that we can put towards OPEX um, versus CAPEX um, is money that, um, if you like, will impact on rates mm -hmm. specifically. Because it could be said the same thing around um, Te Urihi. Um, that's a capex potential project as well. So it's yes. Yeah, so you have a mix of capex and opex projects, but we're very mindful that opex comes pretty much directly off rates and, and capex. Bit more complicated because actually we can raise our own capex and, and actually this sometimes comes with strings attached that make it a bit more difficult for us so we've tried to give you a blend um, um, we're not in standing orders making amendments at the moment so oh, suge I, I just, suggest I, ideas yeah, i'd yeah, say a, would be a the suggestion right. a yeah. suggestion <laughs> uh according to my math with what i suggested before there was uh, one million uh one million is it 15 50 that uh, 50 000, was it uh left over um, from Mahara uh, to Mahara, I'd like to take that 50 off that and put it into the Te Urihi as um, OPEX uh, with regards to the planning aspect of whatever storytelling is going to be down there with CapEx being the aspect that would actually have physically put in place. Just something to consider. Uh, we've got Kim via Zoom. Um, I just want to clarify where we're at. So we're on the amended list, and instead of 1550 to Waikanae Library, we're taking 400 back to Mahara Gallery, and 150 back to the storytelling and landscaping, leaving Waikanae Library in there at one mil. Is that where we're at? Slightly different. Uh, there's just 50, 50 difference in there. Uh, that would be 200 to Tauruhi. Um, 150 at CAPEX and 50 at OPEX. Okay, yeah, okay. That's all. Cool. Um, seeing as I think we've got about four or five or six different versions of this going on, and it sort of feels like we're not going to really get anywhere in progressing this today, I'm going to move 24. Point to see that the item being discussed should be adjourned to a specified time and place and not be further discussed at this meeting. And that specified time and place will be here 1.30 p.m. on Thursday the 22nd of September. So another strategy and operations committee meeting which should give us some more time to discuss it. So do I have a seconder for that? I was say, Councillor Elliott was waving her hand before His Worship the Mayor. You can point of order. What's the specific point of order? I've got no idea, but I <laughs> tell you that um, we have, and you would, uh, we have um, candidates do have a timetable of community events that we've agreed to. One of them is four o'clock at KYS on that particular day. So well, then it will be a very quick meeting, I'm sure. Well, I'm just saying it, it is it is really disrespectful to the youth of our community if we do not turn up to that meeting. Yeah, I think if we get into the same situation again after another two and a half hours of, of back and forth. So we've got, um, I've moved that. Uh, Councillor Elliott has seconded it. All those in favour say aye. Oh, sorry. I've, I've completely gone rogue here. 
and my very apologies, before we do that, I should reinstate standing orders. Let's do that. I move to reinstate standing orders. Seconded by uh, the Deputy Mayor. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Now I shall move 24.2C, which uh, I'll slow down for Dem Services, who will be wanting to note this down, that the item being discussed should be adjourned to a specified time and place and not be further discussed at this meeting, which will be in Council the specified time and place is Council Chambers at 1.30pm on Thursday the 22nd of September. And I'm moving that, and I'm assuming Councillor Elliott is still seconding that, and I'll just pause so they can, them services can catch up with me. We're all good? Cool. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Is anyone going to use the D word? No one's doing a D word? I'll say division because I am not sure who's voted which way. You want to do your microphone and call to that so everyone can hear? Those in favour? Councillor Compton, Councillor Randall, the Mayor, Councillor Buswell, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Holborough. Those against? Councillor McCann, Councillor Halliday, Councillor Pravanoff, Councillor Coots, and so Councillor Hanford. Janet's just Janet's is just doing the numbers. Six, four, five again. So it's carried. So that's carried. So that means we can crack on with the rest of today's agenda. Do we want to? Well, I think we've only got a couple of fairly procedural things to deal with, so we won't grab a recess. We will go on to contracts under delegated authority. So I don't know if we've got Jane down here yet. So, uh, I'll take it. Is <laughs> Ninka? Oh, is Ninka, Ninka is able to speak to this one? I know, I've thrown you off by progressing to something else other than three waters. All lit up, so we'll let you take it away. I didn't, um, I actually didn't talk to Sean about this before he left because he didn't mention there was anything I needed to add to the report. I think, I think we can and take this report as read, can't we? Yes. I mean, this because this is just a uh, one to note it as well, so there's yes. nothing for us to do. So, do, the Deputy Mayor is happy to move it. Do we have a seconder, Councillor Buswell? Do we have any debate? Fantastic. All those in... Oh, 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 James is waving. Sorry, James, I'm, I'm sort of reliant on what comes up on my monitor here. So, uh, Councillor Coots. Thank you, Gwen. And staff are not telling you that the whole time I've had my hand up and called division, and not for division, to get attention. So you didn't even enter into debate when you um, closed the last item. Uh, you just put that to the vote. Uh, so... Uh, even as chair, you do not have the right to. The, do you mean the Do you mean the procedural motion? Correct. The procedural motion doesn't have debate. So we were almost there in terms of the. Well, I'm pretty sure we were there in terms of the list. So why, why delay it directly against Iwi's wishes that were raised previously in the meeting round, not delaying it, and then just ignoring questions from elected members to query that. I thought we had consensus around the table. I didn't feel that we were there, and I'm seeing shaking heads there, and um, Councillor Hanford, I believe, was saying it was getting rather complex and confused, so, yeah. It's an absolute waste of time having the controls and putting your hand up if staff are not going to tell the chair that there is a question. I think in defence of staff, they are trying their best to manage what's going on in the chambers as well as what's going on online as well, so it's... Um, 
you know, I think they're doing their best, and I'm trying to keep track of everything that's going on here, as well as the various procedural issues. So, I mean, we take your feedback on board, but yeah, it is obviously the hybrid situation is a, a bit uh, confusing, especially when we're juggling around with all these numbers in the table as well. So, I take your feedback on board, though. Um, now, we were midway through debate there, um, so I'm assuming Councillor Pravanov is going to is uh, contributing to the debate on this report, hopefully. Actually, Mr Chair, I was going to follow up on a comment um, that Councillor Coots made in relation to the last um, item. Um, I don't know whether you allow me um, that option can we, or not. Can we, I'm happy for us to address that once we get out of debate for, for okay. noting this contract under delegated authority. Okay, yeah, okay. That's fine, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so any debate on the, the sole contract under delegated authority? Naomi. Sure, I just have a question, actually. Oh, I'll allow that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely okay with standing order, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to ask the question. No, 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 ask away. Um, I just note that there's no time of final consideration within the report, but I did wonder whether or not there is consideration of having time of final at the table when decisions are made around awarding these contracts. Um, and I raise that because in Iwi Land um, we are growing and um, potentially um, beginning to own some of the companies that tender for these types of contracts. But also um, at the ground level we are also often having to work with the people who receive these contracts and what we often find is that sometimes the people who are awarded contracts such as these um, don't have a very strong level of cultural competence mm -hmm. and so we're often having to have the battle at that mm -hmm. level as well. So I don't know. Did I ask a question in there? Was I, yeah. I, think, I think there's yeah. a question yeah. in there. And I think... Uh, yeah, the CEO. Um, I think it's a reasonable um, question in the context of the points that were raised uh, by Te Atiawa when they came to the council a couple of weeks ago, and um, that's the sort of discussion that we that we were going to be having when we um, have the Mana Whenua mm -hmm. operational group discussions over the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, the point that you made, I suspect, will get well discussed. Perfect. Right. No further no right of reply from the Deputy Mayor? No. All those in favour of recommendation, I've skipped ahead in my papers, please bear with me, of recommendation A on page 16, say aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Now, just before we jump onto the next one, I did say... Councillor Pravanov, I was going to let you make your point. Uh, th thank you, Mr Chair. So I suppose just following up on um, Councillor Coots's point and the fact that we're now going to come back on the 22nd of September, unless we have any more conversations between now and then, the same debacle is going to continue. So I just want to raise that and maybe we need to have another briefing as well or some other conversation because we really need to get our heads around this um, to have a good succinct meeting. I would thoughts uh, on that, please. I would completely agree with the need for conversations about what people feel they need to do. Um, as, uh, as has been mentioned, there is going to be a time constraint on the attendance of some people, so... Well, I suppose the other view in relation to that time constraint, I would imagine there's probably going to be a number of, number of people going to that meeting, and um, if it's not resolved by then, then there won't be a, a quorum. Yeah, and the um, the Chief Executive has just asked if there are any questions for additional information that councillors would like, or our EB reps as well, if they could please send them through to the Chief Executive, so that we can hopefully get those addressed before that meeting, and 
hopefully all have a bit more clarity going into the uh, fourth attempt on to make progress on this. Councillor Buswell. My concern is that it, it, there's a lot of silos happening here. I think that, um, you know, pe people will go off and have their private chats and they'll make up their own mind, and that's not inclusive. I, I would rather actually see us uh, potentially workshopping it around the table with our iwi partners and with everybody um, contributing on a big whiteboard and lists made and visual things being written down so we are all familiar with what is going on. Because otherwise I see that it's just going to turn into another thing that's happened today where everyone, well not everyone, people are talking in riddles mm. between one another and it's, it's, not, it's not cohesive. I want to come to a meeting where things are 98% certain we know what we're looking at and I, I can't see that happening if we don't meet prior to the meeting and I, I don't, it's not working behind closed doors or anything like that, it's just working together. And sitting here listening to um, Iwi's um, disappointment in the process, I'm, I'm sitting here unsure how we can make up that ground that was lost. Um, you know, they, they wanted consultation at the beginning of the process. Well, that horse is bolted and I'm not sure how we can regain that time. And how, I don't know how that's going to go between now and the 22nd of September. I'm uncertain. I would rather us all come together and work together on it. I take your I agree with Councillor Buswell. I take your point, but there's also, I guess, the, the need for the public to see us debating what is clearly quite a contentious absolutely, issue. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But if, um, I mean, the public won't want to sit for another six hours seeing the same thing going round and round in circles and us not coming to a conclusion. Mm. No, I don't that's a fair point as well. I don't know what is going to change between now and the 22nd. The people around the table aren't changing. The election's not changing. <laughs> they might the be in three weeks' not time. Changing. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Coots, and then uh, hopefully we can move on to doing the minutes. Mr Chair, you said that the um, Chief Executive said if there are any questions that would help with decision making to send them through. We had those questions in the briefing. We asked for the budget for Mahara Gallery. Uh, prior to the increase and after the increase with the reasons behind the increase. We got two sentences in the paper and then a letter sent to us two hours before the meeting. So with all due respect, we have asked for information and not received it. I don't know if the Chief Executive wants to respond to that or not. Well, we'll have, we'll have another go at that. Um, but if there are any other additional uh, request for information, send them through. Um, but we will we will have another uh, troll of the information that we have relating to the gallery budget and see if we can do better than two lines. Cool, thank you. Um, Councillor McCann, do you have a very short one so we can plough on with? Yeah, but it is, it is a response to um, what was just said. I did think that we were very close to um, getting a compromise before. Uh, the challenge now is do we keep going with that compromise or are we going to come around uh, the table and start again, which literally will take six, 12 hours. So we need to have an understanding of what, where we're going from here. Are we going from where we left off or are we starting again? Because they're two completely different things. I'm, Can, ha I'm happy to carry on from where we thought we got to, but just have a little bit of time to make sure that we're all comfortable with it and we know exactly what's happening and it's all locked in. Yeah, and I think... And it, we feel maybe slightly more comfortable with what's going on. Yeah, and I think having a... In terms of the compromises and all that discussed, a single updatable chart so we can see where everything's moving as we go, as opposed to everyone trying to keep track of where the money's shifted around in their heads which hopefully means that when we come to vote on it, we can vote on it as a single thing rather than having 11, 12, 13, 14 different votes on that table. Um, and then, yeah, 
hopefully the fact the pain of today will encourage us to uh, to be very compromising next week. So uh, well, Kim has uh, indicated she's got a question online, so we'll go to her. Um, yeah, I thought we were close to to a list. Um, what I don't want to see is that we come back and then during the meeting we have a whole another list of changes. Um, so if we can, if we are comfortable with that list, I'm confident that I can take that list back and get some kind of engagement with uh, Ngahapu, because basically it's a mix of both. And we were going to abstain because over process, um, but at the end of the day, the decision does need to be made. And I, I did think we were close to the list. I didn't understand why all of a sudden we laid that on the table, but it's happened now. Um, but I don't want to have another meeting like this, where we bring the list back and there's another three changes. So I think potentially we could encourage the, the people who are suggesting changes to the list to sit down and negotiate amongst themselves and maybe figure out where everything had landed and they can bring that back, since that's where a lot of the changes were happening. Uh, that I think could be quite helpful and then we hopefully won't have to relitigate a whole lot of stuff next Thursday. Um, Councillor Pravanov, I will get to these minutes, I promise. I'm trying to be very generous here. Thank you, uh, Mr Chair. So if I can just highlight the fact that there's also another recommendation, well, actually there's two other recommendations that we were meant to uh, um, make a decision on today. I think the, th the fourth one, D, is quite straightforward. But we also need to put our mind uh, uh, between now and the 22nd to see that's on the agenda. Your referring to recommendation C that was in there. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Cool. Thank you. All right. Oh, I will give the deputy mayor the last comment on this, and then we are Sorry, going to confirmation on it. I'll circulate my suggested amendment. That would be very, very helpful. Thank you. Right. Confirmation of minutes on page twenty-four of your agendas. Do we have any comments or changes or discrepancies people have noticed that we want to bring up? No, nope, good. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder for I'm that? happy to move. Um, Councillor Elliott's moved that, and uh, the Deputy Mayor has seconded that. Any debate? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour say aye. Aye. All those against? Now we are, uh, that's uh, passed. Now we're moving to uh, public speaking time. No public speakers I've been made aware of. Excellent. So now we're going to move into public excluded. So if I could have a mover, thank you, His Worship the Mayor, and I'll second that. Any debate? No. All those in favour of moving into public excluded, say aye. All those against? And we'll just wait a moment for the live stream to be killed. <laughs> 